We are back on the court again and just in time to see Alexander and Vinton County battle it out in the alley for control of the Ohio. Athens basketball celebrates a former player battling cancer. And the Vinton County Lady Vikings threaten Nelsonville York's title chances. Hardwood Heroes is back right now! for season 13 of Hardwood Heroes. I'm your host, Haley Hollinger. And I'm your host, Bryce Tinson. And Haley, excited is an understatement. Season 13 is going to be electric. To kick that energy off, we're juiced to formally debut the ninth team of our coverage, the defending girls state champions, the Waterford, Waterford Wildcats, excuse me. To help us welcome in this team, we bring in Waterford lead reporter, Peyton Brooker. Thanks, Haley and Bryce. So far, both boys and girls seasons have been quite exciting. The Waterford Lady Wildcats returned back home last Saturday to take on the Lindsley Cadets. The Wildcats kept it a tight game against the Wild Cadets, keeping it close to the fourth quarter. But in the end, after an 8-0 run, the Wildcats came back to hold off Lindsley for a final score of 47-39. What key players showed out Saturday to get them to their victory? The Wildcats got the ball in the hands of three players that all contributed to the close win in Waterford. Avery Wagner and Lakin Jones led this team in scoring, with both having 14 points each. Avery Smithenberger was also a key player for Waterford, as she led the team in the fourth quarter to a 6-0 run of her own. She would end up with 13 points, being a key player for the Wildcats. But the chemistry of this team was the key factor in the success for this game. Meanwhile, the Lady Wildcats conference title race is on the line Monday night as they take on the South Gallia Rebels. A win for the Lady Rebels would control their own destiny in the TVC Hawking with one win could win to clinch the title. For the Wildcats, this is a must-win game. A win could give the Wildcats the chance to share the TVC Hawking or win outright if they can win their remaining conference games. Peyton, we talked a lot of in-conference ball with the girls, but this out-of-conference game for the boys is just as important. Yeah, it is, and the Wildcats had a tough task against Shenandoah Friday night. Wyver came into Sarahsville looking to match the energy of the last time they met. For both of these teams, it was back to where they started as once again proving this game will be back and forth close affair. Junior Jared Armstrong came to this game red hot as he would fire three threes throughout the night, ending up with eight of them in total. He ended the night with 28 points altogether, being the top scorer for the Wildcats. Senior Chip Adams would also put the effort towards uh, cat scoring with 17 points of his own and packing nine rebounds in total. The story of this game, however, came down to the second half as Waterford began beginning to become outpaced and rushing for shots. Except senior Xander Fairchilds took advantage and outshot the Wildcats, putting a total of 34 points for the night. The Wildcats in the end would not be the one to come out on top of this one as Shenandoah would take back their loss with a final score of 71 to 81. Now going towards the next games ahead for the Wildcats, they will have a long stretch ahead of them in the TBC Hawking Conference. Next week, the Wildcats will take on the Southern Tornadoes. They'll be on the road to take on the South Gallia Rebels. Then, a tough task awaits as they take on the number one team in the Hawking, the Federal Hawking Lancers. Afterwards, the Wildcats is back on the road to take on the Belfry Golden Eagles. And finally, after a performance against South Gallia at home, the Wildcats will head over to Gloucester to take on the Trimble Tomcats once again. That sounds like a tough stretch for the Wildcats. Keep us updated, Peyton. We're going to switch gears to another hawking staple, the Trimble Tomcats. We welcome in Trimble lead reporter Cameron Knopf. Yeah, thanks, Haley. It's been a tough stretch for these Lady Tomcats, but they look to bounce back on Thursday. Trimble looked to play Cinderella when they welcomed the TVC Hawking leaders in the South Gallia Rebels. We skip early in the first quarter. Joe Lee Richards hits Jay Lee Osborne, who put this ball on the floor for the drive. She's going to go ahead and lay it up and in with the right hand. That tied the game at four. She would finish her night with 13 points. On the next possession, South Gallia's Tory Triplett spots up in the corner, catches, shoots, and knocks down the three. The Rebels would begin to run away in the second quarter. Morgan Lyons finds Lindsey Wells on the wing, who hits her mark from three-point land. Later, Richards would knock down this mid-range jumper for the Cats, but it was too little too late, as South Gallia leaves Gloucester with a 55-26 victory. Despite the loss, Coach Richards was happy with his team's improved effort. The stress level tonight was about playing hard. Our effort the last couple games has not been very good. It has not been up to Coach Richards and Coach Richards' standard. Um, I thought we brought the effort for the most part for 32 minutes tonight. That's what we've been struggling with. 
can. We can't wait to continue to see Coach Richards and the girls' effort on the court. But the boys are also putting in the hard work from what we've seen from the Trimble Eastern game. We're going to welcome an Eastern lead reporter, Ethan Sargent, to help us break down that game. Thanks guys, the Eagles welcomed in the Trimble Tomcats to the nest and it was a packed house. They were all ready for some good old fashioned TVC hockey basketball as the Eagles look for back to back wins for the first time in two years. Yeah, Ethan, let's take it to the middle of the first quarter. Easton's Connor Nolan lets it fly from deep. Yes, sir. In the second frame, Levi Weber misfires from mid range, but Cole Wright is there to grab the rebound, put it back up and in. Count the bucket and the foul. Cam, that was part of a dominating 13 0 run for Trimble in the second quarter. They'd pull away. That's right, Ethan, and the Tomcats didn't look back after the break. Here, Weber finds Michael Clark, who knocks it down from beyond the arc. He would finish with 10 points, and the Tomcats would come away with a 59 25 victory. It's another dominant win for the Trimble Tomcats who moved to 8-6 and six overall and have a 4-2 record in the TVC Hawking. Wasn't the Eagles night at night as they were outmatched on both sides of the floor. Trimble were just too big for the Eagles as Cole Wright and company had their way on the glass. Yeah, Ethan, the physicality of this Tomcat squad was on full display. Howie Caldwell has his team throttling their opponents, and that showed as Wright, Kempton, and the rest of this Trimble crew shoved the Eagles out of their way on Friday night. Yeah, absolutely right, Cam. Eastern were just overmatched. Outstandingly, Trimble had over triple Eastern's rebound, snagging 30 boards as opposed to just eight for Eastern. The Eagles also struggled from the field, shooting just 27% and a painful 13% from three-point range. Yeah, and it was a different story for Trimble as they shot 47% from the floor, while both Kempton and Levi Weber both shot 66 from the field for the Tomcats. The Eagles were just ran out of their own nest by that Trimble squad who picked up a big time conference win to stay alive for a potential TVC Hawking repeat. Now Eastern's going to look ahead to their next conference matchup against South Gallia. Yeah, and as for Trimble, their next opponent to repeat as TVC Hawking champions will be on Friday against bottom of the conference Southern as they look to mount a late season charge. Thanks for the great work, Cam. And now we're going to switch over to the Eastern girls team. Ethan, how did the late Eagles fare this week? Bryce, they're starting to find their stride and they are heating up at the right time. They've won their last four in a row as they headed to Southern Thursday night. And in order to catch those red hot Waterford and South Gallia squads, the Lady Eagles are going to have to play their best ball in crunch time. Led by Sydney Reynolds and Erica Durst, Eastern had their sights set on climate control against the Tornadoes. And the Lady Eagles would waste no time getting on top of Southern as Julie Durst was hot early with a couple of three-point baskets. Eastern's defense was smothering all night as Durst had six steals and the team had 11 in total. The aggressiveness and energy was high on both sides of the court as they fought hard for every board and applied pressure to the Tornadoes at every chance. Reynolds once again led the way for Eastern with 23 points, five rebounds, and nine assists. Erica and Julie Durst followed that up with 15 and 14 points, respectively. The Lady Eagles comfortably take care of business, rolling 71 to 36 to pick up their 11th win of the year and fifth in a row. Coach Jay Reynolds is confident that his team can compete with the best of the best in Southeast Ohio. Burn Union setting at number four. We should have won that game and lost the last minute 30. So you know we're we're capable of beating those teams. It just just hasn't hasn't happened yet. We've had a lot of road games this year and, and, a, and a really a tough schedule. So just just trying to prepare for that tournament here at the end of the season. After Saturday's 71 to 62 win over Sims Valley, Eastern's up to six in a row and they'll look to make it seven as they take on Trimble this Thursday. Thanks, Ethan. Appreciate it. What? More TVC basketball? Check out our Facebook and Twitter for game recaps and conference standing updates weekly. Rewatch your favorite plays and shots over and over on our Instagram. And you can even take a peek into the TVC student sections on our TikTok. And for a bit of light reading, go to woub.org for written recaps. Ball never stops and neither does our content. Haley, our last thing to talk about in the Hawking is the Federal Hawking Lancers. That's right, Bryce, and the Lancers are causing a stir. Both boys and girls boast a winning record. For the latest on the Federal Hawking team, we welcome in lead reporter Maria Manessi. Thanks, guys. The Lancers have faced tough opponents as of late, but have seen improvements from their four-win season just a year ago. When you talk to head coach Amos Cottrell, one word stands out, confidence. It has been a huge part of the team's growth this season, especially against the opponents they have faced. The Waterford Wildcats were their next tall task Thursday night as they look to break their two-game losing skid. But the tough and physical Wildcats proved to be too much for the Lancers early on. Waterford had 34 rebounds, which was a problem. The Wildcats found ways to get around Federal Hawking in the paint, and they simply could not compete with their size. 
Maria, what stood out as the biggest problem for the Lancers? Well, Haley, I mentioned the rebounding problems, but their aggressiveness is hard to beat. Avery Wagner was a problem in the paint. She had 11 of those rebounds, 12 points, and it was hard for the Lancers to get around her. They turned the ball over, and despite them trying to add points to the board, nothing was working. Once the lead was big, it was hard to climb back from. That led the Lancers to face their third straight conference loss, 52-15. Now let's transition to the boys. How's their season been going? Bryce, it feels like a completely different story for the boys who have continued to dominate week in and week out. After dropping their first two games of the season, the Lancers have been on a roll. Impressive gameplay has them sitting at the top of the conference, and they continue to be aggressive. But for Federal Hawking, it's about focusing on what's in front of them and not getting too ahead. They have certainly found their groove, and Friday night against South Gallia looked to be no different. The Rebels came out fast and were on a run to open up the game, but the Lancers' defense didn't let that last long. Both teams kept it back and forth in the first half, but the Lancers found ways to make the Rebels uncomfortable. They hit shots and got key rebounds that had them taking a 33-24 lead into the half. This three-point shot from the Rebels at the buzzer could have gave the Lancers trouble coming out of the half, but it was the complete opposite. They scored 33 points in the third quarter alone, and once they were rolling, it was all the Lancers. You see 33 points, so something had to have been clicking for the Lancers. What was it? Well, it's simple. Once the Lancers found their stride, they didn't look back. Four players finished with double-digit points, and rebounding was huge for the Lancers. Team chemistry was flowing all night long, leading to a dominant 73-31 victory. Head coach Jonathan Thompson talks about how important the beginning of the second half was. We always say first three minutes of the second half is either makes or breaks or what we're going to do. Um, luckily tonight we come out of the locker room ready to go. Um, we were getting defensive stops. Our, our press was working. We were rotating like we were supposed to. And I tell the guys all year when our defense is flowing, our offense goes. The Lancers have now won 14 straight, and they continue to impress at the top of the conference. Thank you, Maria, and you're absolutely right. And as the Lancers try to carry that momentum, let's take a look at their current lead. There are two games up on both Trimble and Belpre, who sit at 5-2 and two in the conference. Waterford is middle of the pack at 3-2 and two and still has an outside shot at the conference crown with seven game, games left in the conference schedule. South Gallia, Eastern, and Southern round out the bottom and are out of range for the title. On the girls' side of things, it's down to three teams. South Gallia and Waterford are separated by just a game, and they'll settle it on the court on Monday night. Eastern has an outside shot. In third right now, they'll need some help and to win out. Fedhawks sits fourth with just three wins in the conference. Triple and Belpre are both fifth and sixth with, just, with two wins apiece, and Southern sits in last. It's time to talk about the Ohio now, starting with the Athens Bulldogs. Welcome in, Morgan Anderson. Thanks, Bryce. My Lady Bulldogs have certainly been the talk of the TVC. And that talk comes with some serious walk. The Lady Bulldogs currently sit atop the conference throne as they are an undefeated 8-0 compared to last season's 5-7 finish. Flipping the Athens script early on, the girls put up some impressive wins to TVC powerhouses like Meigs, Nelsonville, York, and Vinton County. Talk about a team on the come up, Morgan. So how do they fare against a team like Circleville? Absolutely. On Monday, the Tigers send those Lady Bulldogs back to the doghouse, though, 49 to 34. Circleville's tight defense kept Athens hasty on offense, allowing 11 turnovers in the first half. It seemed like Circleville really outmuscled Athens on the glass. How can Athens improve in that department? Bryce, I'm giving you one name, Emily Zuber. Zuber is one of two seniors on the team, and it shows. She's bringing height to the hardwood, and she snagged eight rebounds in the paint. And the girls have played a really tough non-conference schedule, so what's Coach got cooking there? Head coach Phil Koska said he's playing a tough non-conference schedule to prepare his young squad for the veterans of the TVC, and that's just the recipe for success. Switching over to the boys now, Morgan, it looks like your matchup on Tuesday was more than just a game. Absolutely, Bryce. This game was just being played for a greater cause. Game much bigger than basketball. November 5th was just another day for Marietta sophomore Ashton Harris until it wasn't. He was um, in basketball tryouts um, and kind of getting started with the season over here at Marietta. And he just had some issues keeping up, doing the normal routine drills. He got checked out. They thought there was a possibility he could have some type of cancer. So he was life flighted to Akron Children's. Ashton was diagnosed with myelosarcoma, a rare form of acute myelocytic leukemia 
or AML. But the 16-year-old student athlete is determined. Right now, Ashton is currently undergoing treatment in Cincinnati, but his support extends all across Southeast Ohio. After transferring to Marietta High School from Athens last spring, when the two teams met Tuesday night, they shared a teammate. Regardless if you were a Bulldog or Tiger, you were playing for Ash. Always remember, you have two whole communities fighting with you. We hope you can find a special place to hang this jersey. And always remember, your Bulldog family loves you and fights with you. Darcy Middleton, a Marietta parent, knew the rivalry game against Athens was a chance to do something more. But the turnout was what she never expected. We were like, hey, you know, let's do something maybe when Athens comes and, and plays. It was supposed to be something really small. <laughs> T-shirt sale, maybe raffle took it here. <laughs> and it turned into this huge thing. I mean, I've, I've never seen this many people in our gym. But it's tumbling. The tribute night between the two schools raised $20,000 to donate to Ashton's family. Oh my gosh, it's overwhelming and I'm so proud of our communities. Like, unbelievably proud. From the players to the mascots, everyone sported a Play for Ash t-shirt. And Ashton was able to see it all. And if we could all, Ashton's watching online right now at that green camera up there, if we could all wave that and give them a little round of applause here. Thank you. A rivalry game turned into one community. The Bulldogs and Tigers played for Ash. With a community like that, it would make for a heated game. Heading into the first, it was tied 11-11. In the second, though, Marietta blew this game wide open. Tiger big man Alex Kendall, a 6'6 forward, led the game with 20 points and snagging eight of those boards. With a guy like that alone, the dogs just couldn't compare. Nathan Shattuck had 15 points and led with four assists for the team. But with consistent rebound struggles, the Bulldogs would lose this one 66-40 and fall 4-10 overall. Thank you so much, Morgan. Now we're going to throw it over to the desk to get a look at the team out of Pomeroy. Thanks, Bryce. And joining me to break down the Migs Marauder season is Migs lead reporter Aiden Crowley. Aiden, this girls team from Migs has been up and down to start the season, but do you think that they could maybe make some noise in the Ohio? Absolutely, Haley. Don't let that record fool you. This Marauder Ball Club has hung around with the best teams in the 7-4-0. If you take a look at their schedule, the Marauders have been competitive with teams like Eastern, Athens, and Nelsonville York. And recently, Megs have found its stride winning four of their last five, including Thursday against the Wellston Golden Rockets. Now, it seems like they may have turned a corner. What do you think contributed to this turnaround? Haley, the play of Riley Lyle has been big on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. She finished with 21 points, seven rebounds, and five blocks. That's not a bad day at the office. No, it's not. And Aiden head coach Heath Hudson has to be happy with the play of late. Absolutely, Haley. They've been gelling together, always making the extra pass. And can we just take a second and give a shout out to the kicks that head coach Heath Hudson is a rocket. Those are sick. But the Marauders have a big challenge next week in a revenge game against the Athens Bulldogs. Absolutely. If Megs wants to be that dark horse team in the Ohio, a win and a revenge win would be so sweet for this ball club. We're going to be following that matchup closely, but it's a different story for the boys this season. Yeah, Haley, they've had their growing pains to start the season. This is an inexperienced ball club, and right now it's kind of showing. They've not only did they lose their 1,000 point scorer Coulter Cleland to graduation, but junior Braylon Harrison went down with an ACL tear. Many looked to Harrison to take a leadership role in 2023, but Friday, this team might have found some firepower on the offensive end. The Marauders were able to come out with the win Friday. Where did you see growth from them in this one? Yeah, when I talked to Jeremy Hill, head coach for the Marauders after the game, he said they fought very well. They got down in the first, again in the third, and a team with like a record like that typically folds, but the Marauders did not blink. Right, and you already talked about a little bit of growth, but how can they grow the most this season? They got to take care of the basketball, and they need production from a senior leader, and that was Brody Butcher on Friday. He was everywhere on the floor. So with all of this being said, do you think this team has a chance to play a spoiler in the TBC Ohio? Absolutely, Haley. This team gets rowdy, they get hot, and they're scrappy. So nobody wants to be heading into Pomeroy late in the season. Well, it sounds like things could very well get interesting in Pomeroy this season. Thanks for the great work, Aiden. Now let's take a look at the Alexander Spartans, and we're going to bring on Alexander lead reporter Shane Scalfaro. Thanks, Haley. The Alexander girls have been on a downhill skid this season. 
And with their game on Saturday, the skid got a little steeper. After losing two superstars in Marley Grinstead and Kara Meeks, this team has been left to dry with no seniors. While the grind has been alive, the outcomes have, been, have left a lot to be desired. And with a tough matchup against the Cold Grove Hornets, it seemed as though the trend would continue. From tip-off, the game quickly slipped away from the Spartans and they got down fast. The Hornets kept themselves ahead and outplayed the Spartans in every aspect. And while Alexander had a small surge towards the end, it wasn't enough to pull themselves back in the game. Cold Grove was too much for the Spartans' defense, with the Hornets winning 47-24. to Shane, it sounds like these girls are working hard, and they're going to continue to do so in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, Haley, you're right, and that mindset of work hard and it will come to you is really paying off for these boys. To help me talk about more elite mindsets for a different team, this is Vinton County lead reporter Zach Mothersbaugh. Yeah, Shane, this Viking team has a brand of team basketball instilled into them each and every practice, and you can see it pay off during their games. Their possessions normally include all five players touching the ball, and no player holds the ball for too long. VC tends to stick to a shoot when you're open motto, and that comes from swinging the ball around the perimeter. On the other side, the Spartans play a very different game. They know to put the ball into Kyla DiAugustino's hands whenever they can. With a constant double team put on Kyler, it opens up the court for the rest of the team. But this offense runs through DiAugustino. Two different styles of play, these teams battle for ground in the TBC Ohio race. And early in this game, it was the Viking style that prevailed. Vinton County started on a 6-0 run, and their first four shots were threes. But Kyler DiAugustino was able to drag Alexander back into it. And that he did. DiAugustino scored 18 of his 40 total points in the first half, and Alexander got in their rhythm bringing the halftime score to 24 all. The third quarter was where it really started to swing toward the Spartans. Vinton County saw Ashton Allman go on and off the court with foul trouble, and they struggled to secure defensive rebounds without him. And that paved the way for Zach Barnhouse to shine. He crashed the offensive boards and used his size to get the ball up and in, and their lead held through the fourth quarter. Down a couple of possessions, the Vikings started to turn the defense up and get a couple of steals to bring them within one point, but they just couldn't finish the job and fell 58-54. With this result, winning out for both teams means they get at least a share of the title. And for Alexander, they have a big road ahead of them. They split their next six games with three home and three away. They hit the road for games against Wellston, River Valley, and Meggs, while staying home against Athens, Trimble, and a big season finisher against Nelsonville York, which could be for a conference title. The only teams standing with them, Vinton County and Nelsonville York. And those two teams are going to face off in just five days. And for that, we're going to welcome Nelsonville York lead reporter Dylan Westmeyer. That's right, Haley. The Buckeyes and the Vikings do have a game that could lead to the TVC Ohio title. Round one of this matchup ended in a 64-52 Vinton County win. Dylan, what gives NY a chance to flip the script on Friday? Nelsonville York is known for their defense. Nelsonville York can go from a full court press to a zone to a half court man defense. The stifling defense leads to easy buckets in transition. The Buckeyes are led by guard Keegan the Gator Swope, who runs the offense and spearheads the top of Nelsonville York's full court press. Swope is an unselfish guard who looks to set up his teammates and, can't, and isn't afraid to take his shot if he's left open. The team's greatest strength, though, is their depth, as they run eight or nine guys every game, allowing players to stay fresh. And that is going to be Vinton County's next game in the TVC Ohio. From there, they finish the season entirely in the TVC Ohio, with matchups against Athens, Megs, and River Valley before finishing their season with the Wellston rematch at home. For Nelsonville York, before their matchup against Vinton County, they need to take care of business against Megs at home. After the Vinton County matchup, they take on Wellston and Athens at home before traveling to Alexander to finish off the season. If the Buckeyes are able to win out, they will take the TVC Ohio outright. The Nelsonville York boys are in the thick of the title race, but so are the Lady Buckeyes as they hope to keep pace with Athens after taking on Vinton County Thursday. On the flip side, the Vikings are 4-12 with a 2-6 conference record, coming off a loss to Rock Hill, and they're out to spoil the Buckeyes' title chances. Vinton County was playing on the back of Lindsey Riddle, who couldn't miss to start the game. Riddle had Vinton County's first 11 points, pulling them back from an early 6-0 deficit. The Buckeyes stayed tight in this one with continuous aggression at the offensive end, drawing multiple fouls and taking advantage at the free throw line. Yeah, Dylan, but Vinton County's consistent shot making held this one close, as it was 25-23 Vinton County at the half, but the Buckeyes started the second half the same way they started the first. That's right, Nelsonville York came out shooting, but the Vikings were able to hold on until Kaylee Dupler and Kalina Hernandez made back-to-back -back threes to end the third quarter. The Buckeyes were able to hold off Vinton County for a 59-53 victory. 
The last time these teams faced off, the Vikings suffered a 68-14 to blowout. The Buckeyes shot lights out at home, making 57% of their three-pointers, but only shot 36% from three in the Garther. The reason Nelsonville York was able to take this victory was their aggressiveness on offense. The Vikings continued to foul Nelsonville York and couldn't get to the line themselves. This resulted in a free throw discrepancy of 17 for the game. And Zach, the reason for this discrepancy was the fact that the Buckeyes were crashing the glass with such a high intensity all night. It seemed as though all the offensive rebounds that Nelsonville York brought in led to fouls. It certainly did. The Vikings only had five less field goal attempts, even with the huge difference in rebounds, and it didn't help that Vinton County was without their starting center, Chloe Habron. Dylan, Zach, thank you for the great discussion, and let's carry that on and see where the Buckeyes fall in the Ohio. They're sitting second in the conference right now, and they're just falling short because of that loss to Athens later in the season. Athens is in first so far because they've beat every team in the Ohio once, but they've beat River Valley twice. The title is far from secured though because we're going to need to watch out for River Valley in Megs. They're sitting both at third place right now and battling it out. Benton County, Wellston and Alexander are seemingly stuck at the bottom. Looking at the boys in the Ohio, we've got NYVC and Alexander currently in a three-way tie for first. Now, you're going to need to want to keep an eye on every single one of those teams, which means that that conference race is so far from over. And behind our conference leaders are Athens and Wellston, and they're currently tied for fourth. But don't count them out because they're going to be a threat later on, too. Lastly, we have Megs in River Valley, and they're out of the conference race for this year. Now, Bryce, we talked a lot about team effort so far, but we also have some individual standout performances. Haley, you're absolutely right, which means it's time for our Hero of the Week. First up, we have the girls, a marauder who causes mayhem on both ends of the court, Riley Lyle. Yeah, and Lyle was the leading scorer for Megs with 21 points against Wellston from mid-range to deep in the paint. Good luck stopping the shot from sinking. Lyle had 13 points at the half and was 54% from the field for the night. But what makes her such a double threat is Lyle's defense. She had five blocks and two steals, and that's what I call stop, score, stop, offense. <laughs> yeah, this isn't just one game thing either. She's been Meg's leading scorer all year long. Absolutely, Haley, and all they need to do for a share of the Ohio is hand Athens a loss. The Bulldogs are going to need to do their best to limit Lyle's damage. Another player that requires lockdown D at all times is our boys hero of the week. And his name is already on the back of kids jerseys and rightfully so. It's Kyler D'Agostino. D'Agostino scored 40 of Alexander's 58 points in their game against VC and did it on 45% shooting. His ability to change speed with his dribble makes him nearly unguardable. He loads you to sleep and then boom, he's at the rim and has elite finishing ability. And Bryce, we gotta talk about how he overcame that 3-2 Vinton County defense. The Vikings put Alexander in a tough spot, but Diagostino didn't rest, and he worked hard to put VC in an unforgiving deficit from the paint and the line. He laid it out on the court all night long. All night long indeed, because he played all 32 minutes of this game and never faltered once. Both of these players were huge parts of their team's victories, and we're all going to be watching to see where their season goes from here. I'm really excited to see which other players can raise the bar from the point we're at right now. That's all the ball we have for you until next time. But throughout the week, be sure to check out our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to catch those highlights and game recaps, and TikTok for TVC updates. And now we're reintroducing our Hardwood Hero Snapchat. Find behind the scenes, photos, and videos, and occasionally even a student section feature. Go to Hardwood Heroes underscore heroes to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and as always, we're reminding you to, to be, be heroic. heroic.